Hi, it's Darren with SimNation again. Uh, gonna do a quick video about Texas Tech. Um, so Texas Tech is my fourth team in the league. Um, and I took them over specifically because they were a low prestige team. And in looking at that roster, they sucked. Uh, so kind of like LSU was when I first took LSU, but I wasn't doing videos back then. So um, I wanna kind of talk about how to take a team and really try to change them up fast and make them better. Now, Texas Tech actually, back in the beginning, was one of the elite teams. They were led by Zombie, uh, who's just phenomenal. So whenever you take a over, whenever you join a league or you take over a new team, you want to set an identity. And I've talked about this, so I'm not going to go into great detail. But for me, when I first came into this uh, game, um, my identity was largely defined by three players, three human coaches, uh, Doc Williams. Uh, I took his rushing attack and his defenses. Uh, Lowell was the guy I learned how to pass from. Uh, and then I will say that Skeletor was the person who helped me hone my running game into what it is now. Uh, there were other coaches along the way who definitely helped me with understanding the game better. Frankie being one, Gary being another uh, and then Zombie was someone who I followed very closely. Zombie I had uh, a relationship with from uh, Bullbound because uh, he was also in those leagues uh, and just a phenomenal coach. A as much as um, there were a couple coaches that I learned not what not to do from. Uh, of course, I'm not in the league anymore, and I'm not going to mention their name because I generally try not to shit talk people. Uh, so... Uh, but what I will say is, when you join a league, find out who the best players are in the league first. It's okay to talk to them and say, hey, I would like some advice or I'd like to do this. People like me are always going to give you good advice. Shark's another great guy in this league that does it. Frankie does. Uh, Skeletal will when he's in a good mood. Uh, he generally will, period. Stuart uh, also is another coach who will help you out where he can. Um and what you'll find is Udo is also in that category. There are a lot of great coaches in this league who are more than willing to help you as you get spun up. Uh, but the first thing I do whenever I take over a team is, one, I understand my prestige, and then I understand what the conference dynamic I'm in. Uh, if I take over in the off season or before the season flips, I would recommend, by the way, if you're going to take a new team, try to take them right before the season flips to the new one. The reason why is you can now set your schedule and you can give yourself cream puffs. Very important to do that in your first season is don't try to take on the heavyweights. It's not going to help you in your first season. Your first season sets some realistic goals for yourself. So if you're taking over a really good team, your goals are going to be higher. If you're taking over a really bad team like Texas Tech, your goals are going to be lower. My goal this season is to get to a bowl game. That's my only goal. That's my only focus right now. If I do better, that's great, but that's what I'm aiming for. When I took over LSU, my first goal was to win two games. Uh, and I exceeded. I think I won like five games. Uh, but that helped me create a focus. The next thing you really want to do is, before you even look at your staff, is... I took them over at the beginning of the season. I took them over in week two during an open week. The first thing I noticed is, holy crap, everybody's hurt. All these guys were questionable, by the way. Uh, why are they hurt? Fatigue is an indication of training. When I took over the team, all these settings were at their max. You can't do that. Uh, you want to stay below 22. Uh, so I had to quickly figure out how do I get them back down and just dropping to 22, it would take maybe two or three weeks for them to recover. Whereas I dropped them to 19 and they recovered almost immediately. Uh, so my advice to you is if you take over a team during the season, you notice everyone's out due to fatigue, immediately go to training. Look to see, is this number bigger than 22? If it is, back them down to 20 or 19. Focus on the core values you need, and then once they people stop being fatigued, you can move them back up to 22. But really, the first thing I look at is the roster. Uh, and I, I start looking to see what I have to play with. Okay, what type of offense can I run with this team? 
Um, this is going to be different. I'm not going to install my system here. I'm going to focus on building a system for the team itself. And I want Texas Tech's identity to be a dink and dunk offense. So short passing, fast wide receivers, quick wide receivers, and just break plays open uh, with a strong outside running game. Uh, so in looking at this, okay, uh, well, first of all, I only had two quarterbacks. So Joseph Wood is a running back that I moved to quarterback. And I did it because he had the best arm of all the people who weren't a quarterback. Uh, and he could run the ball. So he'll give me a change of pace. But Matthew Simmons was out. I think he's still out. Oh, he's good now, finally. Thank but he's not accurate. So I don't have a really good quarterback, right? Um, 67 arm is pretty bad. Uh, Intelligence-wise, Guerrero and Simmons are about the same, but what differentiates them is the accuracy. Uh, definitely, Carl Guerrero has accuracy. Neither of them is very skilled at their position, uh, so that's going to be a problem throughout the season. So I was like, okay, dink and dunk. It makes sense here because his arm isn't very good and his accuracy is. He's got decent speed, so I may be able to do some option plays or some RPO, but I'm not going to do a whole lot of RPO because the team's not going to support it. Uh, running back wise, I had a lot of good running backs, a lot of fast running backs. Now you're probably just looking at this and saying, no, you don't. I moved them. Uh, the reason why I moved them is I had to create speed in my secondary and speed in my receiver core. Uh, and that's where they went. But I wanted to keep, because I want to do outside running, I need to have speed and I need to have some agility. I don't need strength. Uh, I may very well move these other guys, but Ellis Keys uh, and Rodolfo Shelley are my main two running backs. Uh, though I'm going to have to figure out how to replace them, so when I show you my recruiting, I'm recruiting heavily for speed running backs. So again, I'm building my system. Um, so I didn't move these two because these two were the fastest and most agile and made the most sense to leave at their position. Uh, especially Shelley, because he has pretty good knowledge of his position. He has good endurance. So these guys can play pretty much every down. I kept one uh, strong running, two strong running backs, but really my strong running back is Gerald Smith. Uh, I'll use him in specific situations. Uh, I didn't mess with fullback. Um, I'm not going to run many plays where I'm going to use a fullback, candidly. Uh, and if I do, my fullback needs to have some speed because I'm going to throw the ball to him. Can't really do that here, so they're going to block. Uh, and I focused on the blocking uh, fullbacks. I thought about moving a tight end here, but I'm not going to do that. At guard, again, my focus is largely on passing, blocking, uh, with some run blocking, and I wanted to have speed. So um, the guys who start for me are fast or have decent agile, less of this amount of strength, but really can pass block first and then run block second. And that's my focus. So I'm going to throw the ball more than I'm going to run it. So I want them to be able to do a really good job of pass blocking. And when I do run it, I need them to be fast enough to get out to the edge because I'm going to be doing a lot of sweeps, a lot of pitches, and a lot of options. At tackle, kind of the same thing, right? I need pass blockers more than I need run blockers. So I'm going to prioritize the pass blockers higher. Now, I'm lucky in that I have Robles who can do both, but he's slow. Uh, so I'm not going to run a lot off his side because the fact is he's probably a good pass blocker. He's not going to help me in the running game. Um, center, I didn't do anything, though. But at tight end is... So Edward Smart is a running back. Edward Mott... I think is a running back. I moved them both. Uh, one, because Mott had good speed. He was a decent blocker. He has really good agility, so I can play him in a dink and dunk, and he's going to be pretty successful at it because of his agility. Smart I moved because of his agility again, plus he was one of the stronger running backs I had. Uh, he had good hands, and he's got good speed. So as a tight end, he's going to create a matchup issue for me, which is what I need to create. And then I have my traditional run blocking tight ends who I'll use formations to switch the tight ends in and out. At wide receiver, I did move a couple of these people to safety and to cornerback because I needed to create a secondary. 
I'll pay for that in penalties by doing that, but I needed to do that because generally I had decent speed. I'm playing the dink and dunk mostly because I don't have many people who have a speed of 90 or above 85. So dink and dunk is at its best when you have agile and good hand wide receiver. So I have people like Dahl, who I'll finally get back, thankfully, this week. Um, Chauncey Gaines had a huge game for me in the last game. Uh, he's not f really, really fast, but he's very agile. Joshua Kelly, I'll get back at some point, hopefully, and he'll be able to star in there. Even though his speed is 64, that agility is going to be really good in a short passing game. I use Julio McCain a lot. So a lot of these guys, I'm focusing more on the agility trait because I'm a pass short. Uh, but I do want speed in the long run because I want them to be agile and fast. So that way they can catch the ball and then explode. Uh, and I use this, I've this. i used this offense before at Maryland. Uh, and it worked really well when I had those type of wide receivers. I'm not going to worry about height right now. Um, but height will factor in over time where I want taller wide receivers just because in the short passing game, it means the quarterback can throw higher and it'll help. Skill will matter, but it doesn't right now for me because I'm just trying to get, fa I'm trying to get uh, cut cutting wide receivers on the field who can catch the ball. Uh, I mentioned this before is at cornerback. You can always tell when I move someone, I'll have a one. Uh, so Russo was a, um, I think he was a wide receiver. I moved him, and you're like, well, he has 71 speed down, but his agility, again, he's someone I can play in zone, who I can play up near the line, and he should be able to shut some people down. Uh, so that's the reason why. But as you can see, is I had Burke and I had Gonzalez. In my last game, I actually put Russo in as the QB1 because I noticed that when I was game planning for South Florida, that their starting wide receiver wasn't fast. So I was like, I can jam him on the line and then let his agility keep him from getting behind them. And then I'll play certain coverage packages that allow the safety to roam, which will further cover him. So again, if you have slower, slower cornerbacks, it's not the end of the day for you. Just think about making sure that you have maybe faster safeties and that you're playing schemes that a lot of times are covering for your slower cornerbacks. Uh, and that's normally a free safeties roaming. You have zones with the free safeties or your linebackers are dropping back in a zone. Uh, so you create double coverage uh, without necessarily intending to. Um, at linebacker, I didn't really move much around Hill. Linebacker is going to just suck for me this year. Um, I, I still am toying with cutting people, Hill. Uh, now, the reason why I haven't cut them is whenever you cut players, it hurts you in recruiting. Uh, I don't think I can afford to take the hit this year, so I'm going to have to figure out and live with like having Chris Hardy play a inside linebacker and keep my inside linebackers in the run uh, blocking phase. So it's going to limit me on defense. So what you're going to see here is I'm probably going to have a really good secondary this year. I'm going to have a really crappy front seven. Um, that may not be true because the defensive line is actually decent because of I was able to move people around between D-line and defensive tackle. Uh, my defensive tackles are built for the run, uh, maybe not as much for pass rushing. Uh, which is fine. I want them to kind of do it. I'm going to run a lot of 4-3, uh, mostly because I don't have the linebackers to run a 3-4. Um, as you can see, generally I gauge by 78 Ohio. I only have two that fit that criteria. I want to keep the linebackers largely off the field because um, they're not going to help me. Uh, so defensive end, uh, again, this is a Pretty decent position for me. I've got the speed uh, to be able to pass rush. I've got the strength to be able to run. So the defensive end is actually a strength for this uh, defense. And I'll be rotating them in and out throughout the game. They're a little undersized, um, but I, I can work with this at least. This is actually a fairly decent one. Robert Berry, I think, was a linebacker that I moved over. Uh, because he'd be fast, or and I could use his speed to help create some matchup issues. At free safety, 
D'Angelo was a wide receiver. I moved him to free safety because I didn't have anybody who had any type of speed. Uh, and I'm going to need that because I've got Baylor, I've got Oklahoma, I've got Shark with Iowa State who would look at this and go, ha ha, I know what I'm doing to Darren. And he would be successful. Be, so I moved uh, D'Angelo out of wide receiver. Uh, he's going to commit a lot of stupid penalties, but 6'2", 196, he's actually going to be decent. And he's a coverage safety. He's not a coverage cornerback. Uh, Brent Helm is someone I moved from free safety. Uh, I think I finally get him back, which is good because I'm going to need him. I, I'm going to probably move another person. And if we go back to wide receiver, because I'm going to continue to pick on my wide receivers. I'm probably going to move one of the 70 guys over who has great hands to try to create a ball hawk. Uh, I'm not going to move any more running backs because I just don't think it adds value. But uh, if I had to guess, I would probably look at someone like Ocho, although I may not because I like him in the passing game. I probably would. I'm not going to move Gilbert because he's like my number one wide receiver. I may move Herschel Bishop because he's got great hands. His agile's, agility is not great, but it's 6'4", 210 pounds. Plus he has a tackling of 34 it would be between him and Steven West. Whenever you move a wide receiver to the secondary, always look at their tackling. If they have decent tackling, you should move them. And for instance, also, if you want to move a, make a linebacker out of a tight end, look at the tackling. If they're above 40, it's workable. It's best to try to make that move before training camp. I didn't have that luxury, though, because I took the team over after training camp. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my punt or my kicker. So... I've moved a bunch of people around. I've created what I call a dink and dunk. And my defense is going to be a 4-3, four, 4 lineman front. I'm going to try to keep... I don't want any more than two linebackers on the field at any given time. And the reason for that is I just don't have any good linebackers. I have more de good defensive linemen than I do linebackers. Uh, I'm also going to largely try to avoid too many cornerbacks on the field because, again, I don't have a lot of great cornerbacks. Uh, but when I looked at South Florida, what I noticed about them, and I had the benefit of playing them the previous week with Washington State, is I was able to see what they were up to, and I was able to look at the play analysis and say, okay, on first down, they are largely running the ball. Second down, they are largely running the ball. Third down, they are passing uh, and then fourth down, it's mixed. And then I started to look at the plays. And this is how I started to build my thing. One, there's no way I'm running a 3-3-5 against them. They would just eat that alive. I knew what Washington State did well, which was they were going to run the ball. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to try some things. I clicked on the wrong one uh, to fix that. But before I go into that, um, the next thing I looked at was my staff. I have a really good head coach. Um, his record doesn't indicate it, but he can coach offense, coach defense. He's a superb recruiter. Uh, his pipelines are Massachusetts and Michigan. That's not really ideal for me, by the way. He's really good at developing the offensive line. So I'm gonna, when I do my training stuff this week, I'm going to have him start developing the offensive line because I need some help there. Uh, Charisma is important for recruiting. He's got that. He likes a 3-4. He's not going to get it. Um, West Coast hybrid offense. A dink and dunk is largely a West Coast offense. Um, Rosenbaum is just not good. Uh, I think I fired the original guy already, and he's just someone I picked up. Uh, he can. He's okay at coaching offense, but I picked him up because he can develop quarterbacks. I'm going to need that, honestly. Uh, Andrew Roberts is really good at coaching defense. Um it looks like they got him from Kentucky uh, this past season. Um, and I'm going to have him largely focus on the younger players, the freshmen, and focus more on being my lead scout. I'm not going to play a 5-2. I don't have the bandwidth for it. I didn't fire him because I don't want to create some recruiting issues right now. Uh, Strategy-wise, I am going to run the dink and dunk. Depending on the team, I'm either going to mix it up or I'm going to go pass heavy or I'm going to play a more balanced attack, which is what I did against South Florida, where I was throwing the ball 40% of the time. Uh, and then, um, I'm sorry, running the ball 40% of the time. And then pass on the bigger downs. I'm only playing one defense right now because I'm building my defensive play set. 
and trying to determine which plays are best for the run versus the pass. Uh, normally, I would just let the defensive coordinator run it, but I'm worried about some of that. So I took a defense from another one of my teams, uh, put it in, and now I'm going to watch it for the next two games and make a decision about which plays get split into my pass package, my balance package, and my run package. Uh, again, Hill Chauncey Gaines is my best wide receiver. Rodolfo Shelley is my best running back. Uh, Keys is just someone who I think is going to be good in the box. Uh, as you can see here, I largely played a balanced set. Um, I did something I normally tell you guys not to do. I matched quarterbacks to wide receivers. I'm doing that because I have so few of them. And I need to make sure the quarterbacks stay on the wide receiver. Normally, I would have this checked off. Uh, and, of course, I wasn't aligning my man coverage. Um, and I didn't set one because I couldn't guess who was the person. For this coming week against Kansas, I'm probably going to leave it on auto again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what they're playing in their playbook uh, based on the last two or three games. And then I'm going to determine which passing I'm going to probably do or running I'm going to do. And, that, and that's a key is look back at the last two or three games. In the play analysis, you can actually see the plays they ran. And then you can kind of take a guess as to what they're doing a lot. And then that's where you say, I'm going to try to block the short passing. Like if I was playing uh, with LSU, I played Oklahoma. This was set to long passing because I knew anytime they threw the ball that they were going to probably go long. And I needed to take that away. That did hurt me, though, because it killed me with the run. Uh, formations, I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, now you're like, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm only running two, two, form two sets. I'm running a... Uh, spread in a two tight end. That's it. So uh, again, I've talked about this. My one, I use formations more to rotate players in and out and also to create matchup issues. So my one and my three packages are always run. My two and my four always pass. Uh, so you can tell what I'm doing here. I haven't set a defense of one yet because defense is something I normally will work on over the next couple of weeks. And I, I'll get that right. But um, the dink and dunk uh, is nothing more, like I said, than a spread in a two tight end formation. Um, so I'm going to go through this. The bubble screen's not working. I'm going to probably pull that out or lower it. Uh, but the other ones were largely successful. And you might be asking how I chose these. I chose short passing games. Nothing bigger than a medium. I always pick outs under. It's just it's a staple in my playbooks. Uh, I picked balance because tight end check down is something that I've run with success. Uh, but everything else is largely uh, short passing games. Uh, running back out is another one of those. It's just a staple of mine. But again, I need the passing to be short because the quarterback can't throw the ball. Uh, and then again, like I said, I want to run outside. Um, the jet sweep's probably going to come out. I I wasn't confident on that one to begin with. Uh, the pitch right will probably come out, but I'll weigh that to see how the pitch left went. Uh, and I don't think I had a pitch left in there, which is strange because I normally do. Um, and then on the defense, I mentioned the TTU de def base. What I'm going to be doing over the coming weeks is I'm going to be looking at this and saying, okay, what do these plays need to come out because they just didn't work? Um, and which plays am I going to keep, but I'm going to take out of the playbook and put in a new playbook and use that playbook for either guarding against the run, guarding against the pass, or more balanced sets. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. So if we look at how they did, uh, they did pretty well. They did much better than I actually thought that they would. And I'll talk about recruiting in a second. Um, so as you can see is... Gill didn't have a great game, but he threw for a lot of yards. And a lot of that was he got the ball in the hands of Gaines, and Gaines just exploded, which is what I wanted to see. So short passing game, catch the ball short, blow up down the field, and run away. And then my running backs are really fast, so they, if they can get to the edge, they're going to get some positive gain, and they did. Uh, Keys, because he's a goal line back, got a lot of touchdowns, but Shelley had a really good game. Uh, Gaines did. Smart is the tight end that is was a running back, so that experiment's working so far. Um, 
And then on defense, uh, the defense have played pretty well. I didn't get as much uh, pressure on the quarterback as I was hoping, but I got hurries which and knockdowns, which I always equate to success. Um, so overall, it was a good start. The defense played pretty well. There's a lot of room for opportunity there. I'm exposed on the rushing attack, as you can see. But Cruz has been having a pretty good year, and I was largely able to shut him down. Um, so I, I think recruiting-wise, my big challenge here is I got to get speed, I got to get arm, and I got to get uh, some. I got to get linebackers. Now the challenge I'm have with linebackers is they're all sophomores and juniors. And I'm trying not to let any of them go. So I'm also recruiting for other positions that I can move to linebacker. So why? what would that look like? Well, I'm recruiting speed at running back, speed at fullback, uh, speed at... And I'm trying to recruit guys who are a little bit bigger. Um, Cornerbacks, I'm not going to move those, honestly. I need help in my secondary, so those guys are going to stay. But someone like a Jonathan Hong, I can move him, if he turns out to be as good as I think he is, uh, to a... Um, I can move him over to linebacker. Horace Birchfield is another guy I could move to linebacker. He'd be a bigger linebacker. But a lot of these guys, um, I'm trying to get for speed. Uh, so... And how do I determine that? Well, it says in the it says in the description that they have speed, and some of the things I see generally indicate that I think that they have speed. Um, but the quarterbacks, I'm looking for people who I think may have decent arms, like this guy Boy Oh Boy, he can throw. Of course, people are now going to go look at him, and I may have some competition where I don't, but I already have competition though. And some of this competition is me because these are people I are, have already scouted with a different team. And I'm like, okay, I should go get that guy. Uh, Elman, I don't think, or Alleman won't be uh, playing that position. He's likely going to move to linebacker. Uh, Kennedy will probably be a tight end. I need to get some fast tight ends in so that way I can uh, do that. So when I'm recruiting, I'm recruiting for what all my needs. And also I'm recruiting players I'm likely going to move. Uh, to create a uh, dynamic. So my goal for Texas Tech is bowl game year two, uh, start competing uh, for the Big 12 title in year three. Uh, so if I can get ahead of that, that's great, but I don't think I will. It'll largely depend on can I get a Huff, uh, can I get a Hoskins, or can I get a Doris. Uh, not great quarterbacks, but the quarterbacks that I can build off of. I have a solid running game. Uh, if I get Uribe, I should be fine. And then get wide receivers in. Yo2 is going to be focused largely on defense. I need to start building out my defense. Uh, and I should be aided by some graduation and other things. Don't expect to see any of these guys in the WWPF draft. Uh, maybe sh you might see um, like Shelby in there. Uh, but I doubt it. And then with training, like I mentioned before, the key here is these three categories up at the top should match your coach, like maybe put Hammonds. I don't want to do Hammonds because he doesn't start for me. Uh, I would be looking at, I think Portor is a guy I'd want. Uh, trying to remember what my offensive guy, I think he was good with young players. That's all good. And then I would export. Um, but this week, uh, of course, I have Kansas. So what I'd be looking at is what's Kansas good at. And again, like I mentioned, this is the go back and see what other teams did. Um, Kansas looks like a passing attack. Uh, yeah, they're a passing attack. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that, but go here. And it, I, I'm not logged in as the commission, so I can't see anything. So uh, again, still a passing attack, but I might look at what Texas A&M used. And I might parse this to say, okay, did you run any spread plays? What spread plays worked? What two tight end plays worked? I'm going to keep that formation set, by the way. But that's generally how I approach a new team. Uh, Texas Tech is off to a really good start. I'm really happy with them. Um, uh, I wasn't the coach when they lost to North Carolina. I do expect to beat Kansas, but my big test is Baylor. Um, if I can get all these guys healthy, I think I have a chance at an upset. Uh, but it's not likely. Um, 
but again, it all depends on how good Gill does. Uh, I'm not confident in him as a quarterback, but I don't have any other option. I do like my running backs. My wide receivers, while not being fast, I do like them for the short game. Uh, and then defense is just going to be a struggle all throughout the year. I'll be shocked if they have, if they're better than 100 in defense this year. The focus really is going to be on the offense. Uh, I'm going to try to win games with the offense. So that's how I approach a new team. That's how I approach Texas Tech. Hopefully you see this as valuable. And if you have any questions, let me know. And again, I encourage you to look at Sim Nation at SNCFL, which is our college football game for Wolverine Studios. And then pro football game is WWPF, also again for Wolverine Studios. Uh, so that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. And we'll have some more coming in the future. Thank you.